Well, good morning, Heritage Church. How are we doing? Morning. morning. We are alive and well. It is good to be back. I've been uh, out a little bit. Last week, we were on a family vacation and family camp up in Michigan, and uh, we're actually going to be doing that again uh, as a family. I'll be speaking up at uh, family camp for Labor Day weekend, and so if you want to spend some time with us at family camp, uh, let me know. You can sign up for our newsletter, where, which has all the details that go out for family camp on Labor Day weekend. But uh, it's great to be back. I've missed our church. And uh, today we're continuing our series. But before we jump in, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to pray uh, for the students and teachers, uh, for the homeschool families, uh, as we are getting ready to launch back into the school year. Uh, we had a, an incredible uh, opportunity this past week for all of our campuses to gather together have a family summer fun night at our Lake Zurich campus. We had some worship. We prayed for the teachers and students. Uh, but I want to do that today. I want to do that for us uh, and for you and your families uh, before we launch in. So would you pray with me? And God, we thank you that we have the opportunity to come to you, that you're a God who is not disengaged from your creation, but you see us, you know us, you want to be in a relationship with us. And so we come to you now through prayer, through conversation, and, and God, we just ask today that, that you would go before our students, our kids that are going to be starting school back up and the pressures they face, the influences uh, that surround them, and God, that you would raise up a hedge of protection around them, that they would be safe in their sporting activities, extracurricular activities, God, that you would uh, keep bullying far from them, God, that they would... Uh, God, that they would hold on to your truth, to your promises, and not, not the lies that others in culture might try to convince us of. God, we pray for the teachers, God, that you would give them the energy and intentionality to teach well. And God, for all the families that homeschool, God, we just pray that you would surround them uh, with patience and strength uh, to continue uh, doing such a, a great thing uh, like homeschool and leading uh, their kids uh, in that way. God, we just pray that this, that this season, that this school year would be different than past seasons uh, because we would see your fingerprints all over the lives of our kids. And we ask that you would move in a powerful way uh, in our school districts and with decisions being made. Um, God, that that decisions would be made in a way that honors you, even from people that don't know you. And we ask these in, these things in your precious name. Amen. Well, we're continuing our series through the book of Proverbs called Wise Guy across all of our campuses. We are one church, uh, Heritage Church, in three locations, in Round Lake Beach, Lake Zurich, uh, and here in Barrington. I'm a little bit more partial to our campus here, uh, but uh, it's... It's one of these series that's helping us look at some of the most challenging areas of our lives and how to navigate those things with greater success and fewer regrets. And that's what we're, that's what we're doing today. Throughout the summer, we've been asking the question, what's the wise thing to do? Because the book of Proverbs is really this book of wisdom of a father uh, training and teaching his son how to navigate life's challenges with greater success and fewer regrets. And we've been asking the question, what's the wise thing to do? Today we're asking that question as it relates to parenting. When it comes to parenting, what's the wise thing to do? We got any parents in the room? Some of you don't want to admit to it. Uh, whenever, whether your kids are little, whether they're growing up, maybe they're out of the house, uh, maybe, maybe you don't have kids, uh, but maybe someday you will. Uh, maybe you don't have kids, uh, but you have uh, influence uh, on the youth and, and others in your life uh, that God has put in your sphere of influence. Uh, today is going to be helpful for all of us. See, Proverbs, uh, it, it's, it's all about parenting. The book of Proverbs is insight of a father to a son, helping train up his son, uh, teaching him how, how to navigate life. And so Proverbs 22.6 Proverbs 22.6 is the uh, main proverb we're looking at today. It says to train up your child in the way he should go. And even when he is old, he will not depart from it. You ever hear that one before? It's kind of, a, it's kind of an encouraging passage. It's not a promise. The proverbs are not promises. Uh, they are proverbs. They are 
pieces of wisdom that if you do this, it is more likely that you'll get this outcome. And so while we are not promised that if we train up our kids in the way they shall go, they will not depart, it is a principle uh, that more often than not tends to be true. And our kids will one day grow up and have to make their own decision about the faith that they have and how they will express and live that out uh, in a relationship with Jesus Christ. We can't force that. They can't borrow our faith. But what we can do is train them up as they are little to, to understand the truth of who God is and the way they should go so that when they are older, they won't depart from it. This is what we see the father in Proverbs doing uh, as he teaches his son many different lessons about life. We see things like uh, the value of hard work and a good work ethic in Proverbs 10.5. It says, uh, he who gathers in the summer is a prudent son, but the one who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. That's one amongst many passages uh, or Proverbs that we see about the diligence of a work ethic and hard work. That when it's time uh, to, to plant, when, when it's time to get the seeds in the ground, that we do that rather than be lazy. That we, we have a work ethic uh, that, that drives forth as a, as a father instructs his son. Uh, the importance of discipline. And in Lane, one of our... Uh, Kids volunteer teachers a couple weeks ago had a great message uh, on discipline. You can go back and check out any messages on uh, our website. But uh, here's what uh, Proverbs 19.18 says about discipline. Discipline your son or your daughter. Discipline your children for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting them to death. And when your kids drive you crazy and you just think I could wring your neck. Instead of putting them to death, uh, exercise dis discipline, help train them so that they can be a healthy, functioning uh, part of society. Not kids running amok, doing whatever they want with, with no uh, authority or understanding or respect for those over them. Here's another proverb on discipline. Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but the one who loves him is diligent to discipline. Because discipline expresses love. It shows that I care. It shows that I'm trying to direct you and, and point you uh, to a greater, more uh, successful life that you would be able to navigate the challenges of life, the struggles of life, the authority in your life with greater success and fewer regrets. So he talks about discipline. He talks about following God's way. Uh, this is a, a fairly uh, well-known proverb 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord. With all of your heart, do not lean on your own understanding or your own way of living, but instead, in all of your ways, acknowledge God and acknowledge the Lord so that he will make your path straight. And there's a way that seems right to, to us as human beings, but often that leads to death because it leads us away from God's standard and direction for our lives. So choosing the ways to go, we've, we, we see par parables and, and pro uh excuse me, proverbs about our finances and wisely handling our resources. And we see parables about wise relationships. Here's one more, Proverbs 13, 20. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And Kip's translation of that would be, uh, you become like who you hang out with. So have wise friends so that they will rub off on you and you can be more wise. Hang out with Dumb friends, and you will become more dumb. That's why I don't let my kids watch Spongebob. <laughs> uh, just making sure you're still awake, you know. Uh, so this, the Proverbs we see over and over. We, we see a father instructing his son. And while all of these things are good to instruct our children and ought to be instructed to our children, so that they can grow up as functioning contributors to society, not entitled consumers, but hardworking contributors, while all of those things are good, the most important thing, the most valuable thing we can teach our kids is to teach them how to have a relationship with Jesus. And church, hear me. The, the wisest thing you can do as a parent is to teach your children to know and follow Jesus. And this truth is not just for parents. In fact, the wisest thing we can do in the spheres of influence that we have is to help people know and follow Jesus. This is the kind of church we want to be. This is a call and challenge for all of us, whether we have kids or we don't have kids. This is who we are called to be as a church. We're not a church just for 
church people. We're not a church just for Jesus people, but for those who are already convinced or who believe and think like we believe. But we're a church where we're going to carry the heart of God into our community so that the people that are far from God, the, the one person that doesn't know God, who has questions about God, who, 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 who wants to know more, that, uh, wants more than this life has to offer, that they could understand and know and follow Jesus. That's the kind of church we are. That's what we're striving to be. And regardless of what campus you attend, what you will experience, Experience at Heritage Church is different expressions of, of this very reality of creating space for people who don't know Jesus. Creating room for those who are, have questions, while at the same time encouraging and challenging those of us who believe in God's word and are walking with Christ, how to grow and develop and become more like Christ. To live on mission and to live that out. It's why on Sundays you'll you'll experience the encouragement and challenges of Holy Spirit-dependent, Christ-centered worship. It's why you'll see powerful and hear powerful, hope-filled truth and teaching from God's Word. So that, we can, so that we can embody that and live it out in our community. That's why next week we have uh, our last uh, church in the park of the summer. And so if you have been at church in the park uh, for June or July, our last one is next Sunday, 10 a.m. at uh, Citizen Park here in Barrington. It's going to be a great time. We'll have food afterwards and, and some time for families to connect and hang out. But we do that so that we can take who God has called us to be and take it out of these walls that it's just for us and go bring it into our community so our community knows that we care and we love them. Our, our Lake Zurich campus is going through an expansion to, to make room for more ministry as people continue to fill it, that space. And, and, and some people might be thinking, well, that's not my campus, and so, you know, I don't, I don't really care or, or, or think about that as much. But the reality is if we are one church, then our heart is, is not to join a com- campaign, but to build a culture of who God has called us uh, to be in in creating space and room, no matter what campus or church it is. That we, would, that we would invest and jump into the mission of God wherever he has us and now however he lays on our hearts to help advance and make space for those who are far from Jesus. In fact, a year and a half ago, that was us. A church that didn't exist yet. And, and, and a church called Heritage Church that said, we are going to rally around, fund, and, and launch a, a group of people in Barrington to continue to help reach more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in a few weeks, like you saw in the video, we're going to have a teacher appreciation event. But this year, we're adding to it our firemen and our police officers to show appreciation and love in the community so that our community would see in Round Lake Beach, in Lake Zurich, and in Barrington, that we're not just a church for ourselves, that we are a church for the community to love and care and show that we, we care and appreciate what they do. That hopefully through a simple gift of a pizza, they would be encouraged to see that the church is more, uh, more for the community more to care for others than it is an internal social club. And that's our heart for doing things like this. And I want to invite you to continue to lean into the mission and the call that God has to help people find and follow Jesus in your life. At Heritage, we want 100% participation in the mission of God that he's called us to as followers of Jesus Christ. And parents, this is the part of our call that God has given us, the purpose that he's given us if you have kids. It's to help them find and follow Jesus as well. That's, that's our mission as a church. That's our mission as a family. That's our mission as parents. To help people know and follow Jesus. To trust him, to follow his ways. This is what we see the father in Proverbs teaching his son, to know wisdom. To know that wisdom starts with the God of all creation, of the author of wisdom, the God of the Bible, that our life is molded and shaped by the truth of God's word, 
not the culture's advice or personal preferences or whatever seems right in the moment, but that we allow God's word to shape and mold us. That's why the father calls his son just a few verses later, Proverbs 23, 26. He says, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes delight in my ways. He's not saying give me your physical heart. He's saying give me your life. Give me your love. Give me your passion. Because I care about you so much. See, this isn't just a call of an earthly father to his son saying, trust me, I want what's best for you. This is the call of a heavenly, perfect heavenly father calling us his creation to give him our whole life, to follow his ways. Maybe this will help you understand this idea a little better of give me your heart and, de- and let your eyes delight in my ways. See, as a father, I look out for the protection of my kids. As the father of two girls, I look out for the protection of their heart. In fact, there is nobody else on this planet that wants to protect the heart of my girls more than I do. Amen, men? If you've got girls, there's no one else on this planet that wants to protect them like you want to protect them. And our Heavenly Father, He feels the same about each one of you. He wants to protect you. So much so that he sent his son Jesus to die for you. That's how much he loved you. That he, The only way to protect you was to have a sacrifice made that would provide a way for your sins to be forgiven and your life to be restored and that you would have hope and purpose in a relationship with him. He sacrificed his son to protect you from the consequences of your sin. He wants you to know he wants your whole heart because only God cares for you. Only God can protect your heart. This world will will say it can, and it'll rip your heart right out of you. It'll break your heart constantly. Only God will protect your heart like a God can. And he invites you to give him your heart. Because no one else will protect your heart like he can protect your heart. So parents, teach your kids. Teach your kids the similar thing because you want to protect their heart and there's no one else that's going to protect their heart on this planet like you're going to help protect their heart. So teach your kids where to find the satisfaction that their heart and their soul is longing for. Teach them to to find satisfaction by training them uh, in growing in a relationship with Jesus Christ to know and build their lives on the foundation of his word. We probably see this in no better place than in the book of Deuteronomy Deuteronomy, it's not one of those books you typically look at, but Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, right? I think first service I missed one, or I missed a finger. Um, But it's the fifth book of the Bible, uh, and in Deuteronomy, we begin to see uh, this, this call for parents fleshed out of the call for all of humanity. Now, let me explain. Deuteronomy 6, uh, verse 4. This is where we see uh, God's challenge for us to give him our everything. In verse 4, it says, Hear, listen up, O Israel, the people of the Lord. Listen, the Lord, your God, the Lord is one. He starts off with this, this repetition of the Lord is God and he is one. The Lord is God and he is one. The Lord there is translated uh, into English as Lord in all caps In the original language, it is the word Yahweh, that is God's name, that is who he is, his essence, and what verse 4 is telling us is that there is no one like him. The Lord, Yahweh God, that God, he is one. There's no one else like him. There's no one else that compares to him. You can have lots of other gods, but there's only one God like our God, Yahweh. So, verse 5, because he is the one God, the only God, the true God, love 
Yahweh, love this God, love the God of the Bible, the God of creation, love the Lord your God with all of your heart. And love him with all of your soul and with all of your strength. And this is the same passage that Jesus quotes in his earthly ministry when he's pressed upon and asked, what's the greatest commandment? And he references the the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, you shall have no other idols, which is restated here in Deuteronomy, to love God, the one God, with all of who you are. And then Jesus continues and he says, and to love others as yourselves. So love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Verse 6 says, these commandments that I give you today, they're to be on your heart. Just like they were etched in stone on Mount Sinai, given to Moses, those ten commandments, just like they were carved into the stone, they are to be carved into your life and into your heart that they would be expressed and lived out. And here it is, God's call, his challenge for us as parents, verse 7 So impress these things on your children. Impress this truth, it means to influence your kids with God's word. Our kids today are influenced by everything. It's not like when many of us were kids and we we were growing up and we could turn the TV off and we could turn the radio off and um, we could brush the newspaper aside. This generation doesn't even know what a newspaper is. It's all on computers now, but, but we, are, we are saturated in our culture today. Our kids are saturated by influences everywhere, whether it's on TV or on the radio or, or, or their friends or their schools or the, the political uh, realm around us that seems to be sinking lower and lower into our schools and into our kids, and then these crazy devices that are so helpful and yet so frustrating at the same time because they, they give us access to influence constantly, speaking into our lives. It's almost impossible to get away from the influences of today's culture. In fact... There are people whose whole job is to influence you and to influence your kids. Their job role is called, their title is called influencers. It's what they do. They get paid to convince you to buy, do, or, or, or do something. To buy this thing, to do that, to go on this vacation. They're influencers trying to speak and, and mold and shape your behaviors. And so my question is, parents, what are you doing Or what is it that you are impressing on your kids? What influence are you having on them? And if you don't have kids, translate that from the sphere of influence that you do have. What influence are you making? What impact are you having? How are you impressing and making a difference for the kingdom of God? Parents, you have an influence on your kids' priorities. You have an influence on their faith. You get to influence what distracts them. You get to influence their busyness. You get to influence their integrity. You get to influence their love for God. Someday they will have to come to their own decision about who God is and make that faith their own. But you have an opportunity as a parent to influence your kids. And this is what verse 7 is telling us. Parents, influence your kids impress on them because the world around them is doing the very same thing and impressing and influencing and so our voice has to be louder not more forceful not more demanding but clear so that our kids understand the truth impress on them the truth of God's word that their life would be molded and shaped by God's word rather than the culture and preferences and society it makes me think of Plato I don't really let my kids play with Play-Doh because I hate the mess that it makes in my house. But occasionally it gets brought out and my kids play with Play-Doh and it makes a mess in my house. And they have these little templates, these plastic things that they take the Play-Doh and they smash the Play-Doh into the plastic mold. And then they peel it out and the Play-Doh looks just like the mold. It has been impressed upon it. And this is the picture that we are given as parents to impress the truth and promises of God's word on our kids so that it molds and shapes them into the same image. We are the ones, parents, we are the ones to influence our kids towards Christ. So how do we do that? 
How do we influence our kids towards Christ? How do we train them up in the way that they should go so that when they are older, they will not depart from it? How do we train and teach them to love the Lord, their God, with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their strength? Well, it means that we impress upon them and we influence their heart. If we, if we want them to love God with all their heart, then let's influence their heart. The, the heart is this human part of us. It's the core of our humanity. And so we're influencing what they believe. That's, that's the reference of the heart. What is it that I believe? It's the part that makes up, the part of us that makes up our mind, our emotions, our will. It's the affections and passions that we are influencing our kids towards putting Jesus first and Jesus most. So if you're going to influence the heart of your kids, one of the best ways we can do that is to help them see God's heart. If you're going to influence the heart of your kids, help them see God's heart. Model it for them. Model God's heart for them. Let them see God's heart in you. Let them see the character of God lived out in you, that they would see compassion and love, forgiveness and humility. And as you live that out as an expression of your faith, you can point them back and say, this is who God is. Let me show you it through his word. Let me show you his character. Let me show you what he's like, that they would understand the heart of God. Because when they understand the heart of God, how much God loves us, then we can better understand how to love him and how to love those he puts around us. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. We get to influence what our kids believe. And then to love the Lord your God with all your soul. This is the spiritual part of us. This is, <clears throat> this is the reality that we were created uh, with a soul as a spiritual being that will live forever. The only question is, is where we will live forever, either with God or separated uh, from God. I, I, love, I love God with all of my soul. It means that that I'm, I'm believing who he is, and that that belief, that, that he is one God, the Lord, that has saved me and given me the opportunity for eternity uh, saved from hell and eternity with Jesus forever, it's what shapes not just the earthly part of me, but the spiritual part of me. It's my identity, it's my character, it's my purpose for existence. This is the influencing of our children's souls. And so parents, if you want to influence the souls of your kids, one of the ways you can do that is to show them how to communicate with their creator. And prayer is one of the ways we communicate with our creator. See, our souls were made to live in connection with the one who created us. And prayer is simply when we talk to God, we talk to the one who created us to know him and one of the ways, it's one of the ways that our spirit enters into community with the Holy Spirit. That's why scripture tells us to pray without ceasing. That our lives would continually be pressing into a relationship with the Holy Spirit as spiritual beings. Because our soul needs to be saturated with the power and presence of God. If our identity is ever going to be shaped and molded into who he intended for me to be. And so to influence their hearts, their mind, emotion, their will, what they believe, to influence their souls, who they are, their identity, their purpose, their character, by understanding how to communicate with the one who created them and enter into a relationship as spiritual beings with a holy and perfect God, and then to love the Lord with all my strength means to influence where they find purpose and how they join the mission of Jesus. I don't know if you, if you ever paid close enough attention to your kids' muscles, but I have a four-year-old son, and it's at least once a week that he comes up to me, Dad, 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 look. Look at my muscles, Dad. Look at my muscles. I was like, buddy, you're so strong. Can you, hey, can you help me? And he, yeah, Dad, I want to help. And we're going to bring the groceries in. Here, you grab the gallon of milk. And watching my son, my four-year-old, with his muscles grab the gallon of milk, and he's like, oh, so heavy, Dad. It's a gallon of milk, son. And, and I kind of think sometimes this is how God sees our strength. Like, oh, that's so cute. 
keep trying so hard. To love the Lord your God with all your strength. It means that I have to come to the realization that my strength is limited and God's strength is not. So with the limited strength that I have, I'm going to press it all into God's strength. I'm going to rely on him completely. The Bible tells us that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. That when I'm weak, he is strong. That I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that is not some sports uh, gear wear that I can do anything. I can score a million goals because God is with me. No, 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 it's not that. It's I can go through any suffering. I can go through any tragedy or struggle in life, not because I'm strong enough, but because I can rely on a God who is strong enough. And with all of my strength, I put all of my, the weight of my strength in his strength to lead and guide me. That's what it looks like to love the Lord your God with all of your strength, is to recognize you have none. I don't have the strength to do anything of significance. I am fully and completely dependent on the Lord to get me through. And so one of the ways we can help our kids love God with all of their strength is model how to trust the Lord. Model how they can put their trust in the Lord. That when life is hard, when things don't go my way, when I'm freaking out and anxious and stressed, when I want to give in or give up, when I'm doing things my way, and it's not working, that I can show my kids I've got to let it go. It's I can't control every situation. I can't manipulate it to get my desired outcome. I have to trust God by faith. Model for your kids how to trust the Lord. Show them the faithful dependence on a God who is stronger and can navigate the storms of life with you so that you don't have to try to do it on your own. See, the wisest thing we can do as parents is to teach our children to know and follow Jesus through loving God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their strength. I love how Deuteronomy continues to help show us how to do this. That it doesn't just say, hey, love the Lord your God with all your strength. Like, get to it. Come on. But he goes on and he's like, well, and, and let, me, let, me just, let me just show you kind of how you could do that. Take a look, verse 7. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk about them when you sit down in your house and when you walk by the way. And when you lie down and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be in the forelets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your home and on your gates. And you say, well, verse 7 I get, talk about them, but what's, what, what's the rest? What's that mean? Look, if we're going to help teach our kids how to love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their strength, if we're going to teach them the way they should go so when they're older they will not depart from it, then we got to talk about it. Talk about these things. Talk about what things? Talk about the love of the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength things. Talk about those things. Talk about what you're seeing God do. Talk about the pr- prayers he is answering. Talk about how he is moving in your family. All right, talk about them. Sound good? But, 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 Pastor, what, like when? When do I talk about them with my kids? They're so busy. Like, there's so much going on all the time. Like, just doesn't seem, when do I talk about these things? All the time. All the time is when I talk about these things. Look at, look at what he says in verse 7. When you sit down at home. When you're just chilling and hanging out. When you walk along the road. When you go for a walk with your kids, when they're in the stroller and you're just strolling them around and maybe you don't even think they can understand you, but just start telling them before they can even speak the great things that the Lord has done. Maybe it's between soccer practice or picking up from school and going to the next activity and the, the next activity after that and in the car and having the conversation. What'd you see God do today? And talk about the things of God and his faithfulness and his goodness. When you lie down, it says, When you go to bed, 
when you rise up, when you wake up, when you're having breakfast, when the kids are running around getting ready for school, before they leave the house, pause and, hey, shine as a light for Jesus today that people would see you and because of your good works, give glory to the God who is in heaven. Teach your kids by talking about your faith. Here's where it starts to get a little wonky, a little crazy. It says, tie them around your hands and on the forelets between your eyes. Like, what is that about? Well, the Jewish leaders took that super literally, and they started taking scripture on pieces of paper, and they would hang it from their tassels on their robes. They would put it in a little box and wear it like a headband around their head, and there'd be a little box on their head. And they'd walk around, and it'd be like, wow, look at how, like, they're... They're, they got God's word right up against their face. Here's what it translates. Here's what it could look like for us. Talk about it with your kids. Do it. Put it into practice. Let it be a part of your life. This is the expression of those things being worn on their head. Some of us might do it today with jewelry, a cross necklace or something. But, but what he's talking about, it's more than just an external accessory to your wardrobe. It's an internal transformation of your life that is lived out, that you're living and doing the work of Jesus. Remembering God's faithfulness. Displaying his love throughout your life and to your family. To, to lead your family in things like communion the remembrance of Christ's sacrifice, the, the death he died, the price he paid for our freedom and forgiveness. Through baptism and teaching our kids what it looks like to go public with our faith and to live it out, to, to teach them to pray, to fast, to teach them about generosity and serving, forgiving, loving others, and living out our faith. That's what it means to tie it around our head and to make it a part of me. And then to write them on our doorposts, I just simplified it like this, post it. Talk about it, do it, post it. Put it on a note and put it on your fridge. Some of you maybe have throw pillows with Bible verses on it or, 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 or Bible verses that mean something to you uh, in your house that when you walk by, it's a reminder of who God is or maybe it's not one that really meant much to you but it was just on sale at Hobby Lobby and so that's the one you got. But what he's saying is post it in your life so that wherever you go, you are reminded of the goodness of God and his promises for you. Saturate the life of your family with the truth of God's word. This is the wisdom of Proverbs 22.6. Train up your child in the way that they should go. Train up your child by talking about your faith, by living out your faith, by remembering God and expressing to others all that he has done in your life so that even when they are older, they will not depart from it because their life was saturated by it. And maybe you have a child right now that is wandering away from the Lord. Maybe they grew up in the church. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they're making some decisions. Maybe you're at that place in your life right now and, and you're making some decisions for yourself and you don't believe this whole Bible thing. Like it just seems too restrictive and I'm going to college or I'm in there now and it's just, it's really hard to, to live all these rules and, and things and I just don't know about that. Can I just tell you there's no one that wants to protect your heart more than the God who created you. And he gave us a roadmap to navigate life with greater success and fewer regrets. Is it harder? Sure. Does it protect your heart? Absolutely. And though our kids may wander away for a season or a period of time, to train them up in the way they should go, that their life is saturated with the truth of God's word, builds a foundation that the rest of their, their character, their identity can be built on. And God willing, when they're older, they will not depart from it. Deuteronomy tells us what it looks like to train up our kids in the way they should go, to teach them all about our heart and our soul and our strength and full dependence on the Lord. The gift of his son Jesus and all that he's accomplished for us. See, we, we can teach our kids a lot of different things. And we can influence them with a lot of different priorities, but the most important thing we can leave with them is a passion and desire to know and follow Jesus. 
church, here's the best part. It's never too late to start. It's never too late to teach your children how to follow Jesus. It's never too late to talk about him. It's never too late to strive after communication with him. It's never too late to remember all the good things he has done. And even if in your family you haven't prioritized Jesus for a while, even if you've made some mistakes in parenting, even if your kids are older now and and you feel like you've lost the opportunity, just know that one of the most powerful things you can model and teach your kids is the power of God that can change and transform my life no matter how old I get. And so maybe your kids are growing and older and, and maybe there's an aspect that God has convicted you of that you can go back and say, I missed the mark. I didn't do it well for you and I'm sorry. But to let your kids see the transformation that God is doing in your life and through your life, that, that it would permeate the, the existence of your family and they would see, you know what, I, my dad's different than when we were growing up. He was so disengaged and far off and I never felt connected with him. It just felt too aloof or disengaged or or passive. But he's a different man now. My mom used to always be so stressed out or overwhelmed and she's she's just different now. As you lean in to God's strength to lead and guide and shape your life, Commit today to loving Jesus and following him with every part of you. To give him your whole heart. That your eyes would desire to follow his ways. That we would begin and continue to impress on our kids what it looks like and what it means to put Jesus Christ first and most in everything. Would you pray with me? And God, we thank you. I thank you for your word that is life to our bones, restoration to our souls, that in a world of struggle and difficulty, 